Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel Thedast. In this video, we are going to learn how to design this 3D printable rechargeable lamp using Autodesk Fusion 360. So here you can see, this is the lamp that we are going to learn to design in Autodesk Fusion 360. So if you watch the video till the last, you will be able to design this enclosure, this red and the blue component using Autodesk Fusion 360. So here you can see the exploded view of the all the components. So here you can see it got two top body and the bottom body and then re all these rest of the components that I had imported from the Gragpad website. Here you can see. So this all you can do uh, into Fusion 360 and so let's dive into Fusion 360. Hey everyone, so we are now into Fusion 360. So here you can see the default screen of Fusion 360. So the first thing that we are going to do we will go on to uh, over here to show data panel. Here you can see I will go on to my YouTube project and inside that I will create a new folder here you can see I will just give it a name I have just given it a name 3d printable rechargeable lamp and will press enter here you can see the folder has been created I will just go inside the particular folder so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to upload few of the components that I had already downloaded from the Gragpad website library so I will just click on the upload over here and we will click on the select files and we'll go on to my download folder and here you can see these are the components I had downloaded it's TP4056 charging module I will just it's a Fusion 360 file here you can see the extension .f3d so I will just select the file and we click on open if you are not getting Fusion 360 file you can also upload the step file so here you can see it's uploading I will upload one other file I will just click on the upload again we'll repeat the process we'll go back and this time i'm going to upload the battery module so here we got the here you can see we got the step file so i will just select the step file since we had this particular model was not created in fusion 360 so the fusion 360 source file is not available but still we can use the step file so i, will, I can just click on open to upload and we'll click on the upload here now we'll upload one another file i will just click on the upload again we'll repeat the same process we'll go on to our, my download folder and here you can see uh, now the component is this one this rocker switch and i will click on the open upload and here you can see it's it is getting uploaded so these are the three components that we are going to use in our modeling process that's why i had, uh, I had created this now i will close this one i will close the data uh, before closing the data panel over here first thing that we are going to do is we'll save this file i will just give it a name here you can see i just provided the name for this particular file and will and the location is inside this particular folder uh, this particular uh, inside this youtube project inside this 3d printable rechargeable lamp folder that we had just created and we'll click on the save here you can see the moment i had clicked save uh, here the file has been created but it's empty for now because there is uh, i had created nothing the next thing I will make sure that my document settings are correct, my units are right, it's millimeter. So now we are ready to start modeling our uh, enclosure for all these components. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a sketch. Uh, first I, what I will do, I will just close this data panel from here and I will click on the create a sketch now. Here you can see I will select this top plane as a sketch plane. And here you can see the planes are active my sketch tools at the top are also active these are all my sketch tools now i will go on to create panel over here i will go on to rectangle and select this center rectangle tool here you can see i will drag it like this to create a rectangle of 80 by 80 millimeter here you can see that and i will press enter so here you can see a rectangle has been created by 80 by 80 millimeter now i'm going to offset this rectangle by 3.2 millimeter so I will just activate my offset tool, we will select the rectangle and will provide a distance of 3.2 millimeter and will press OK over here. And here you can see uh, offset rectangle has been also created. Now what I am going to do is I will just select the line like this. I will activate my offset tool again and I will offset this line towards this direction by 48 millimeters. Here you can see it's going on the opposite direction so i just have to put a minus sign here to bring it on the other direction and we'll press ok here you can see. now again i will offset again i will activate my offset tool will offset this line we cannot offset the offsetted line that is uh, already offset line so we cannot offset it again so what i can do i can activate my offset tool again i will i will just select the line first then i will activate the offset tool and this time I'm going to offset it by 50 millimeter. So they are just two millimeter apart from each other. I will just change it over here as minus sign. And here you can see this has also been created. 
so our sketch is finished what i can do i can just click on the finish sketch over here and i will click on the home view to get into a 3d view here you can see now what i will do i will activate the extrude tool from here i will select all the profiles uh, to create the base i will just give it a minus 1.6 millimeter over here and here you can see the base is being created of 1.6 millimeter thick and will press ok here you can see at the moment i had pressed by default the sketch was turned off so i will expand the uh, folder for the sketch over here and will turn on the sketch here you can see the sketch are visible again now again why i will activate the extrude tool uh, and will select this profile these outer uh, walls and this one i'm going to extrude it by 35 millimeter so here i will just provide a dimension of 35 and will make sure that the operation is joined and will press ok so here you can see that has been created now i'm going to apply some fillets so for that i will activate my fillet tool i will select the corners on which i want to apply fillet so i can just keep orbiting and selecting all the four corners here you can see for this particular four corners i'm going to give it a fillet of 15 millimeter here you can see and i will click on the plus sign here to add more four corners these outer four corners i will make sure that i am not selecting anything wrong i am just selecting the corners so just be careful with that here you can see and this one i am just going to keep 17.4 uh, millimeter and here you can see the shape we are getting and will press ok to set the result now what i will do i will just i am just going to apply some wall uh, extrude uh, inside wall that we had created it is separate separate wall lines so i'm going to extrude this one so i will activate my extrude tool we'll select this wall line and we'll give it a thick height of 18 millimeter here you can see so this kind of shape we are getting we'll make sure that the operation is joined and we'll press ok now i will turn off my sketch so here you can see this is what we got so i had separated this component in two different parts though this particular component is for the batteries and this is for the charging module and switches so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring on the components over here to see if everything fits well so i will just go on to my data panel again here you can see i will just make a right click to bring on my charging module first so i will just make a right click on the component and will click on the insert into current design and it will take few moments so it will get inserted into your current design and here you can see we just got it so i will just go on to the top view uh, to just to position it on the correct orientation i will make sure that it's on the correct position so i will just drag it like this like this to bring it on the correct position and we'll go on to the bottom view so uh, for that i have to change the display settings i will change the display settings to wireframe from here and I will make sure that it is a little bit above, uh, maybe uh, maybe two or three millimeters above from the base of our uh, uh, this enclosure. So I will just bring it to three millimeter above from the base of our enclosure. Here you can see. Again, I will go into the top view to see if the orientation is correct, and will press OK to finish uh, to accept the position. Now I will again will change our visual visual style back to our shaded with uh, visualizers only. Here you can see. Now I am going to bring on my battery. So I will just make a right click on the battery and will click on the insert into current design. And it will take few seconds. As I said, uh, every component that you are bringing in will take few seconds since uh, this is cloud software. So here you can see we got the battery. Now we are going to orient this battery in the right position. So I will just use this cursors to move my battery you can do this all this adjustment until you press ok you can also move that the component after that also but uh, the best practice is uh, just adjust the component before accepting ok so here you can see i'm just making sure that it is just as much close to the wall possible here you can see like this and just bring it a little bit down like this we'll make sure that it's not touching the wall here you can see here you can see now i will go on to the side view and again i will change back this to the wireframe style and we'll adjust our battery to little top like this because batteries are going to sit on the bottom of this enclosure and i'm going to use some double tape to uh, just to fix the batteries here you can see so here we got our battery uh, position correctly i will press ok to set the result 
we'll change back our visual styles to set it with visible edges only here you can see now again i will select the battery from here we'll make a right click we'll click on copy and again i will make a right click and we'll click on paste this time so the same component has been copied again on the same location now just to make a copy of this battery i will move one battery component towards the right and we'll just make sure that uh, they are not touching to each other and also they are not touching to the wall here you can see so i think the space is enough for to uh, allocate two batteries over here and we'll press ok and here you can see this is kind of safe we got so i think here uh, we can also do one more thing we can adjust the height also because height is very high here for now since uh, whatever the batteries i had uh, imported in this particular design components uh, the original batteries also i have the with the same dimensions so we can uh, decrease the height also but uh, it's always uh, i always take some safety measures uh, so there is because i'm going to 3d print this and i don't want to get it wasted so i want everything to be fit correctly so the next thing that we are going to bring in is this uh, switch component so i will just make a right click on the switch component and we'll click on the insert into current design and here you can see it will take few seconds and it, it will get inserted into your current design here it is now i'm going to just reorient this switch also so i'm just want to place this oh, some over here like this and i'm also going to rotate this switch by 90 degree uh, in this direction and i'm also going to rotate this switch by 90 degree in this direction also here you can see now again by use i'm going to use my move cursors to position it correctly we'll go on to the front view we'll make sure that it's it is almost touching to the wall like this so the position of the switch will be somewhere here way over here so what i can do i can just bring it a little bit downward also and towards the left so switch will be some some uh, at somewhere point over here so there you can see and i think the position is good for now so i will just press ok to set the result now what i will do i will just click on the save over here so i will make sure that the everything that we had worked till now is getting saved so i will just click on the save over here and will press ok there you can see and one more thing that we are going to do at this point is I want to apply a fillet on the base also. So I will just activate my fillet tool from here. We'll select the base and we'll give it a fillet of maybe uh, 1.6 millimeters. Uh, a small fillet, not very big fillet. Here you can see 1.6 millimeter and we'll press OK. There you can see. So I, I'm just trying to avoiding the, any sharp corners because in 3D printing it's not possible to print very sharp corners. So here you can see. And since I'm going to use a uh, 0.4 millimeter 3D printer nozzle, so based on that, I'm considering the things, all the features based on that I'm considering. So now we'll move on to creating our next feature that is uh, the, the top cover. And we're also going to create uh, four mount, uh, four holes, uh, four mountings for the screws. So this we're going to do next. So here you can see we had imported all the components and positioned also correctly. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, create opening for these two components uh, for this LiPo charging module. Here you can see it's a, it's a, it's a charging module. So I'm going to create an opening for this USB uh, port and I'm also going to create this uh, opening for this particular switch. So for that, what I will do, I will activate the create a sketch tool from here. And before that, I will just close on the data panel because work of data panel is over. And I will select this plane to create a uh, sketch on this plane. So I will just select the plane. Here you can see. And here one thing I just want to do is I will change the visual style to again wireframe. So I will able to see the components uh, that is hiding behind the wall. I will expand the bodies from here. I will just turn off the body for now. And here you can see the only components are visible. Now I will go into the create panel over here and I'm, I will activate the project tool. And I will project, and I will project the feature of this. Here you can see these two outer profile of our component uh, to get an idea about the for the opening. Here you can see. I'm just selecting those, and here you can see I had project projected these four profiles. I will also make sure that I had projected the right 
right dimension for the switch so i will just project these four points also here you can see and will press ok and now if i go on to my sketch here you can see i had projected four points and this profile if i turn off the components here you can see four points and this profile i will turn on my body back again here you can see now i will change the visual style back to set it with visible edges only here you can see i will go into the right view to get a perpendicular view i will go into the rectangle tool i will activate the two point rectangle and we'll create a rectangle from this point to this point and i will also create a rectangle uh, before that i will create a line like this from this point to this point and we'll make sure that this is a construction line so i can just select the entities and i can change that to construction line so i'm going to change everything that is not useful i will change that to construction line here you can see i will change this complete rectangle also to construction line here you can see that now what I will do, I, I will activate the offset tool and will offset this one by minus 0.4 millimeter. Here you can see and will press OK. So I'm just taking a little bit of clearance. And now I will activate my center rectangle tool from here and I will make sure that I'm snapping to the midpoint of this line and will create a rectangle like this. I will define the dimension of this particular opening. So this one I just want to keep 10 just press ctrl z so first i will define this side this one i want to keep 6 and this side i will make 10 millimeter here you can see or maybe a little higher maybe 11 millimeter i think will be good because we want the port to be completely accessible from outside and here you can see i will click on the finish sketch and uh, these are the two cutouts i want to make on this wall so i will activate my extrude tool we'll select these two profiles and we'll drag it towards this direction to make it cut up to this face so it will be through cut here you can see here you can see the operation is cut already here i will press ok to set the result and here you can see we had made a cut now what i will do i will just apply small fillets on all the corners so I will just select all the four corners of this particular opening. So this fillet I want to keep 0.4 millimeter and we click on the plus to add more corners for this particular opening. So it's very simple. You just keep doing the things and you will learn. It's fusion is very easy. You can just you just have to learn how to navigate across your model and it's all easy. And for this particular uh, thing, I just want to keep 1.2 millimeter of fillet. Here you can see, I will press OK. And it, now if I turn on all my components, you will be able to see the cuts. So this is for this particular pot and it's looking nice. So I think we had to decrease the size of this one a little bit lesser. We had made it a little larger. So what I will do, I will just go on to our sketch and will make a right click and click on the edit sketch. And instead of 6, I just want to keep it 5 and we'll click on the finish sketch. So here you can see the things got updated automatically. So here it is. The next thing uh, I want to create on this face, I want to create a base for this. The next thing I want to create is a base for this charging module. Since it's a little bit higher from the surface of the enclosure, here you can see. So for that what I will do, I will just select the face, we'll click on the create a sketch. Here you can see I had activated the sketch. Now I will activate my center rectangle tool from here and we'll create a rectangle somewhere over here like this. Here you can see. Now if I turn on my model, we'll be able to see the rectangle with better way. I will make sure that these two sides are equal. So we'll select the lines and we'll apply the constraint. Here you can see. Now I will turn on my uh, module and will define the dimension of that particular rectangle from center. So this one I just want to keep 24 millimeters and in this direction I want to keep 15 millimeters. Here you can see and now I will define the dimension of this particular rectangle. So this one is also 15 and we are done. So we can we can change that little bit higher to 16 I think will work 
and we'll de decrease that also de decrease that also to 14 or maybe 14.5 like this and we'll increase it little bit higher maybe 17 and we'll click on the finish sketch and here you can see the sketch is turned on so we'll just turn off the mod charging module to see the, our sketch we'll activate our extrude tool we'll select the face and we are not sure how up to which height we had to extrude so for this what i will do i will just turn on the charging module and we'll turn off the body and we'll try to select the bottom of our charging module as a height up to which i want to extrude here you can see it is at, it is three millimeters so we are done we can just turn on our body again back and we'll make sure the operation is joined because it is being joined with the bottom enclosure body so i will press ok so you can see this is our body till now so the next thing that we're going to create we're going to create a top cover for this particular enclosure so what i will do again i will select this face as a sketch face and here you can see can you see this uh, this assembly icons are visible over here and if you don't want these to be visible what you have to do is you have to go to your data panel just open the charging module because it's all associated with that particular component and inside this charging module here you can see the joints are all visible over here so what you have to do is just turn off from here click on the save and we'll press ok and here you can see it's been updated and now you can close the component and now it is giving me that I had updated something in the associated component so I have to update over here also so just click on over here and it will update it will take few seconds to update the components and here you can see the joints component are all gone because we had just turned off all the com visible features on the component itself so now we'll move on to creating the next feature so just a We'll close on the data panel from here. We'll activate the create sketch tool. We'll select this feature, the sketch plane. Here you can see. I'm going to offset this complete side, this complete profile by minus two millimeter. Here you can see up to this point, and we'll press OK. Here you can see. Now I will click on the finish sketch, and now I'm I will activate my extrude tool. We'll select this inner profile, and we'll try to make a cut like this up to minus two millimeter. Here you can see, and we'll press OK. So I had so I had made a groove like this so the top section will fit onto these grooves. So the, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mount for four holes for four screws. So that what I can do. Uh, what I how I will do? I will just activate my offset plane from here. Offset plane tool from here. We'll select this face this time, and we're going to offset this by maybe minus 10 millimeter so i think uh, that much of long screw will be enough to fix this uh, the top part with the bottom and it's also easily available so we'll press ok here you can see the new plane has been created so we'll select that particular plane we'll click on the create a sketch and now we are creating a sketch on that particular plane so if you want to keep turning on your plane again so you can just turn it on but still you are creating sketch on that particular plane only so uh, now we'll start creating circles uh, for the holes so i will just create a random circle first like this and then i will create one more circle like this and now i will define this position of these two circles so from the origin i will just define this to 34 millimeters from this direction and 34 millimeter from this direction here you can see and now what I will do, I will project this particular profile, this inner profile. So I will go into the create panel tool, we'll activate our project tool and we'll select this profile that I want to project and we'll press OK. Here you can see the profile has been projected and I'm keeping, keeping this hole little bit uh, away from the corners since it is going to be a hole on the top piece also. So this space will give uh, some strength to this particular hole. So now what I will do, uh, I will just define the sizes of this particular circle. So this one is just 2.6 millimeter. And this outer circle, I just want to keep 8 millimeter and will press enter. Here you can see. Now I, what I will do, I will activate a line tool and will try to click on the perimeter of circle and will connect a line like this. Here you can see. I will delete that one because I don't want to be vertical line I, so I will make sure that I am creating a line like this maybe at particular angle 
and we'll do that on the other direction also we'll make sure that these lines are tangent to the circles so we'll activate the tangent constraint we'll select the line and the circle to make them tangent here you can see it. we'll do it on the other side also so we had just created a line that is tangent to this now we'll make sure that these two lines are equal so i had selected both the lines and we'll apply the equal constraint over here here you can see and we'll also define the angle between these two lines so this one i just want to keep 100 degree so there you can see so this is the profile we got so i think we are done so what i can do i can just click on the finish from here and here you can see this is the profile we had created we'll activate the extrude tool we'll select all the profiles that we want to extrude and we want to extrude up to this face so here you can see this is kind of safe we are getting and we'll make sure that the operation is joined and we'll press ok and we'll turn off the this construction plane and here you can see this is the result we got so it's not touching the battery we also got the enough space for the battery as well over here so the next thing that we are going to apply some chamfers at the bottom because it's it's a overhang feature over here that is that will make it difficult to 3d print so for that we'll click on the chamfer tool from here and we'll select uh, this is that i want to chamfer and we'll apply a chamfer of maybe 3.5 millimeter i think it will work like this here you can see and we'll press okay here you can see now what i will do i will select these two features from this uh, from your design history at the bottom here you will be able to see all your design history so i had selected these two features only uh, by pressing shift on my keyboard i will go on to the create panel over here uh, and will activate the pattern tool so this time i'm going to use circular pattern so i had activated that and here you can see we had already selected uh, two features over here and we'll, now i have to define the axis around which i want to pattern so i will activate the axis tool from here so this is the axis that i want to select but i'm not able to select so i have to turn off the body for a second we'll orbit little bit and we'll try to select this particular axis here you can see now i will turn on my body back again and here the quantity i just want it to be four number of times and we'll press ok so here you can see that particular whole mount uh, screw mount has been uh, patterned over by four number of times on all the four corners so i think we are done with the bottom part for now so what i can do i can just click on the save over here so it's always a good practice to keep saving your drawing uh, designs so uh, whatever the accident happens software crash happen you will not going to miss your data so there is also feature to recover data but so we are not sure that what what are the features we are going to get recovered because we had already spent a lot of time on this design so now uh, i'm going to create the top cover so for that what i will do i will click on the create sketch tool again we'll select this top face as a sketch plane here you can see and here i want to offset this uh, this all profiles by just 0.2 millimeter over here just to give it a small clearance with the, this particular part so uh, it's, a, it's a, my 3d printer tolerance it depends upon your 3d printer accuracy it may be a little bit higher or a little bit lower also in case of your 3d printer tolerance so i will just press ok to set this result so here you can see this is what we had created we'll create a circle on the center also uh, so i will just define going to define this circle diameter so this one i am going to make 10 millimeter here you can see and i will create few more circles like this two more circle like this i will make sure that i am using the same center here you can see now the bigger circle i just want to make uh, 71 millimeter so i will define the diameter of this circle 71 millimeter and the inner circle i want to make 35 millimeter here you can see and now i'm going to offset both the circles by 1.6 millimeter so i will just offset this by 1.6 millimeter first and then the i will offset this inner circle by 1.6 millimeter like this so here you can see this is what we did so far so what i'm going to do now is i will just click on the finish sketch i will orbit it little bit to get in a better view i will activate my extrude tool will select this profile i will this profile this profile this profile and this profile and i will make sure that we are not selected this one because we are going to keep it as a whole and i am going to extrude this in the bottom direction uh, by by very small amount maybe 1.6 is enough 
1.6 millimeter thick because we had already had a clearance of 2 millimeter so we can just make it a little bit higher maybe 1.8 and we'll press and we'll make sure that the operation is new body because this is a separate piece this cover is a separate piece and we'll press ok so you can see we it. if I go you uh, if I go into the inspect over here we'll activate the section tool and we'll section over along this particular plane so I had to turn on the body to select the plane and now if I turn on the bodies uh, both the bodies here you can see the section if I show you the close view, it will be something like this. So it's very good. We had uh, uh, followed very good tolerance over here of 0.2 millimeter. So I'll press OK. So now I can just turn off the analysis, analysis or section view. Uh, it was just a view. You can just turn it off or turn it on to see, say it. If you want to delete that, uh, you can just expand it and select and delete also. So I will just leave it for now like this. Here you can see we had created. Now again, I am going to uh, turn on my last sketch so this this was my last sketch and i'm going to extrude this particular feature by maybe four millimeter like this so this is actually i'm creating a kind of wall for our uh, top dome that we're going to use from our old recycled bulb cover so i will make sure that the operation is join over here and we'll press ok now again I will activate my extrude tool and will extrude this one as a one millimeter so this is just for the support of LEDs so it will be not be touching at the bottom even if it's touching because there are some wires on the LEDs also so uh, just to give support I had uh, provided this a small ring over here of one millimeter height and now I, what I will do uh, here we had missed one thing so we had to go back to our sketches because we also had to consider the holes over here for the screws so for that I will just click on my editor sketch from here here you can see we are back into sketch and we are going to project uh, these four holes so we I had activated the project tool and will select all these four holes here you can see not this one just holes so we make sure that I am just selecting that uh, that particular profile only here you can see four objects geometry I had selected and I will press ok so that has been created now what I will do, I will uh, I will just create other circles of 3 mm because using the same center that we had just projected. So I will first randomly I am going to create 4 circles like this. Then what I will do, I will just select all the 4 circles by pressing shift on my keyboard. I can select multiple entities, here you can see I had selected all the 4 and will apply equal constraint. So all are equal now. Now I will define one of them as 3 millimeter or maybe 3.2 millimeter little bit higher because it's uh, from here the screws will go inside and we'll click on the finish sketch and here you can see this is what we got so we'll go back to our first extrude again and we'll make sure that we are not selecting these profiles so it will make it a uh, space for the hole just unselect those all profiles that you had selected in your first screw since we had added these sketches so here you can see we had just unselected those and we'll press ok to accept now if i turn off my sketches from here so here you can see this is what we got so if you want to see it in a better view what you can do you can just go on to the modify panel over here just activate your appearance tool so before applying appearance i just want to rename this body so this one is bottom so i will just make a double click and give it a name bottom and this one uh, is top so I will just press top and will press enter like this let's do it again here you can see we have created top and bottom parts now we will go into the modify panel over here we will click on the appearance and uh, I will just search for the plastic over here and here you can see we got all the library I will just select few of the plastics I just want to use the matte finish so I will just drag those materials to apply on that particular body here you can see uh, I think I had to apply blue over here yeah it's looking fine now I will close this appearance tool from here so here you can see these are the two components we had designed now if, I, if you want to uh, design the dome and the top also because um, you can also do that because that particular component is not 3D printed uh, so the 3D model is not required because that we are going to use from the recycled bulb you can do that but it's, it's an added feature it's just for the preview 
and here you can see if I turn off the top component inside is all my bottom component and if I turn on the top components so this is how it looks and the last thing that we are going to use, do is we are going to apply activate the fillet tool and we are going to apply some fillet on these corners on all this these four corners by one millimeter and we'll click on the plus and we'll also apply some fillet on this top corners just by 0.4 millimeter like this and we'll press ok here you can see this is what we got so it is looking very nice we have just finished our model for this uh, particular enclosure now we are going to 3d print this so before that what i will do i will just select that particular body and will make a right click we'll save it as a stale file to 3d print we click on the save as mesh then uh, it is giving me an option of different file formats so i will make sure that here i had selected the stl binary and the operas, uh, the unit type is millimeter and will press ok and will save this particular stl file on my desktop and will click on the save like this here you can see i will do the same for the top part also will save this as a stl file on my desktop like this here you can see we had just saved the files on the desktop so if you see this is this is the top and bottom files that we had just saved on our desktop and these are STL files so these two files that we are going to use for 3d printing so uh, the designing part is over if you have any questions or doubt about the process you can just go and comment below in the video or you can interact with me on my social media handles also to get your questions answered so if you had any questions or doubt just go ahead guys uh, I'm always here to help you and if you are new to my channel just don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will keep creating contents like this. So uh, let's move on to 3D printing now.